changes to the um, rear axle. We put the let's see can you? Yeah. We put the um, polyurethane there. Uh, axle pushes in there. They're all done. We can't do the fronts. We're gonna go with that maybe tomorrow with the get the front arms off the front subframe. Do the the uh, real bar brushes. And we're still waiting for them because they're either 19 or 21 and we're still waiting for 21 mil ones to arrive, aren't we? Yeah. So we can do the other brushes and that, get that out of the way. Um, so the diff, I see all diff in there, by the way. All right, so we're um, just to prove it though. We better do this to because we could just have a pocket here for a while. Yeah, we could do, yeah. All right, it's the, uh, the four cheater. Oh, we open diff with the diff bearings on there. We do not take the old bearings off and put them on the new diff. We don't. I mean, it's certainly not something I'd recommend. They, you know, you just replace them, put new ones on. New dry shaft seals, done. Yeah, so that's that. So we've still got um, stuff to do on the uh, on the uh, rear end. So cool as fuck that to me. So like I said, diff's all, all been pretty. And that's all sorted out. Um, just because we've got so much to do here. So Julian then at Proform, one of my technical partners, superb, always rely on Julian. Um, you know, he, he's a big part of what we do. Um, so he's done the, done the uh, diff for us whilst we were getting on with other things, all right, because it's just so busy, there's only two of us here. So that's the way it just works as a team. So Julian's put the, fitted the, uh, the CAS, plenty of diff in it. Um, and then checked it all out to, I've never had to shim one, to be honest. All depends on the, the casing, if there's anywhere on the casing or whatever, a certain amount of it will be taken up by the dry shaft. But if you, sometimes, like I said, you, but that's what you do. You know, Julian would have looked at that and wiped it off. He said, yeah, that's fine. The original shims are fine. If you need to change them for different flow shims, possibly, depends on how much wear's been created inside on the casing, right? But I've never had to do it, to be honest. Um, they just um, fit them in and off you go. So I say, so the, we didn't, we took the pictures of it. So the TDV lightweight steel bit fly was all on, the TDV race clutch is on, five panel clutch, dry plate is on. Obviously new diff bearings, new dry shaft seals. All right, so we just wanted to get that up out there so, so we can then, then start moving, we can then put the car up and down on the ramp, whereas it couldn't before because it was supported. So that's all done now. So then to me, you start, um, you know, reassembling all that. Obviously this has got to be changed. It's going to have the one with a, um, the meth nozzle um, and then with the boss and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, so we can start piecing all that together. Don't forget all the suspension. That's um, not being refitted. We're, he's got some Bilstein coilovers, which we'll share with you once we get them down and open them up. But we'll clear the bench and then start um, for the next little lot out there that we're going to do. And um, yeah, it's just still a fair bit to do to me, isn't it? Yeah. Did you um, want to um, explain to the viewers before we get comments about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's it. The extended hole that's there. The extended hole, right? So the extended hole is so the subframe is um, it's like a captive nut inside there, but it's hidden inside there. So you can't. There's no access. There's no way you can get to it from the side, underneath, from the top. You can't. There's a small hole here. There's no way you can get to it. So we don't use gun them off or anything like that. So ratchet. That side started on doing lovely. That started on doing, then started spinning. So it's obviously gets corroded, and the thread's been corroded. Where's the bolts in me? So uh, the, this one here. Right. So what's happened is it's got a bit corroded there. I mean, Timmy's cleaned it up a bit, but it was getting a bit corroded there, and it's just not strong enough in there, and it's just started spinning around. Now you've got to get that out. All right. The only reason we dropped the subframe down was obviously where it's a lot easier. We're doing the the animal bar brushes, they don't even messing around trying to do it in place, so you just drop it, it's easy, you just suspend the steering wrap and just drop it down. But then you come across this problem, so then we've got to address that. All right, so the only way of doing it is you can just keep it nice and neat. You know, you could cut, up, cut, you know, get an angle grinder and start cutting out a, a big bend it back, you know, and then get in the repair, then weld it back, but that would just look a bit messy. So the way to do it is, is like that, is just to make a nice, you know, it looks, I know it's a lot bigger than what it was before, but what we'll do there is we'll just once we do it, we'll, we'll, we're not going to start welding it back in. So we'll, we'll not unbolt that washer, you know, um, with a nylon, a decent setup, and then we'll treat all that in there, 
with some wax oil and whatever, put a little, a little trim around there. And then if, if you still got access to it, innit? It's no different than having a, a wholesome rouse on the, like here, is it? No different than, oh, there, oh, there, oh, there, is it? So it's not gonna take any strength away from it, look. So, but you have to get, you gotta get in there to do it. There's, what else are you supposed to do? You can't do anything, it's just, we thought about the neatest way to do it to me, didn't we? Yeah. And that is, and the, and your customer's all aware of it, and that's it, so, um, yeah, you don't see it anyway, because, you know, it's, um, it's all, the wheels like uh, covering all that in it. So, but yeah, that's just something which happens, you know, when you're trying to do something, isn't it? It's just, it doesn't always go smoothly, does it? But um, there we are, that's it. Sorted, yeah? That's it. And we'll catch up on the next one when we start assembling more, but be a few parts to this video, to me, will it? Yeah. Yeah. That's because you're doing it, isn't it? And it's, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, catch you on the next one. Right, you found us back under the uh, testing 180 of and James's that we're doing uh, quite a bit on to me, and it's getting more yeah. and more in it. So you can see now we took the exhaust off. Which is the rest of it. Part of it, anyway. We'll get the rest of it off because we're fitting a different uh, system on it, and we'll share that with you as we go. It's We've not done it before. Uh, ourselves fitted one, um, but yeah, we won't tell you what it is. It's not the same. It's it's, it's completely different. Put it that way. Give you a clue. The little beast has got one on it. So comments down below if you can guess what that is. So let's move on to underneath. Uh, to me, as you can see, look, well, the calibers are still suspended there, look, because we're putting the ST170 upgrade on the back of that, but we will do once the axle's back up, the axle's down at the moment, we've changed it for the Parplex. Purple jobbies on it, I think that's all done. Shocks are now off. This is the front of the strip. You can see there that, that there's little pink paint marks on the bottom arms of the front subframe. That's just to say that it's all tight. We'll talk to the correct setting. We're waiting for the anti roll bar debrushes. Once we get them, we use two sizes on it. The size that I had in stock is the wrong size like 19 or 21, these are 21. So we'll need to wait for those. They'll be with us tomorrow, hopefully. Then we can get them on. The brushes on the, the front lower arms, the front most brushes, they're already done. That's why it's back again with paint marks on it. Then we can get the suffering back up. And then we'll start them with the rear axle up. And then we'll start, I mean, there's nothing stopping us from putting the rear axle up. Now we've got the shocks down, which are all off on the floor because we are fitting this up. So to be honest, looking at it, Bilstein's one of the best makes you can get anyway. Everybody knows that. I don't need to explain about that. It's very similar. H&R, Bilstein's, same sort of thing to me. So yeah. the ones that run on Monty's and the Little Beast and Malcolm's with the coilovers on it, the h and is very similar to this. Same sort of shape. It's probably made, it's probably made, <laughs> it's probably the same people that make it. Bilstein and h and I don't know if they've got that collaboration going. But the rear shocks, the other ones has per um, h and Springs, well, they're just a different color there, blue instead of red, and the shocks, well, yeah, natural finish, pretty much the same. So, quality, you can tell it's quality straight away. All right, and the good thing that I like about these is with regards to the only difference is that the main difference is these are just normal circular hose on it, all right. So, with the HR, it's elongated, so that's where you get your negative camera adjustment on it, which I like. So what we're going to do on these, because they don't have that, we'll just use the Paraflex camera adjustment bolts. That's how we'll get the camera on the front of this. Um, we might actually, um, we might put some camera plates on the back and we'll be got it apart because, but, well the actual thing, but uh, it's not a tracking thing. So we might be just going a little bit too far with it, but we'll see. So we've got that to start building up and put back on. We've also got some, which we fitted, times before we've got um that's the two for down the they're set halfway at the moment we'll put it on like that and then we'll talk to james he wants to pretty much the same sort of stance he had before at least he can wind up and down and pretty much the side where he wants to put it white line adjustable drop links that's what we call them anyway isn't it? Mm. um and we'll just we'll marry them up put them to the sort of the length of the OE ones, and then we can just make final adjustments from there. Um, as you've seen before, we've got the transition mount insert to go on, and the engine mount insert to go in. We'll do that, camera box roll there. This is the front 
This is the front duct, which we're gonna, which Monty did have in his before we obviously my body it. Timmy put in the in his Timmy, didn't you? Not mm -hmm. long ago. So we'll do the same. Um, Malcolm's got one in his now as well, haven't we? So we've done all that. So you know exactly done these a few of these, yeah. So this needs to be refabricated because that lifts too much. It needs to be brought down. We'll do that on the leg upstairs, and then we'll um, we'll get that bumper hole sold out. Get that one bonded in. We'll do that at the same time as we do the break our break duct kit, isn't it? Yeah. We'll show you. We'll share that with you when we get on the bench, and we'll bond all that in at the same time. So lots to do. The exhaust that's coming um, from America, I believe. So we're just waiting for that to be delivered. Um, we've got an AirTech radiator waiting to come. That's had to be powder coated because they only come in silver, so that's been powder coated black. I'm just waiting for that. We got some DNA. You know the interior strut brace to go across. The one with the stabilizer links down in there. That's in silver, but he wants that powder coated black, so we'll get that done for him. Build up the axle, put the ST170 brake upgrade on the back. We got the AP brakes to go on the front, as you've already seen, different line kit going on it. We'll put some genuine Ford Motorcraft pads in the back. We don't need to go the extreme on that with, you know, spending it on, um, you know, DS2500s on the rear. Um, I think that's, um, yeah, we got, it's, it's relevant to what he's doing with the car. He's not gonna be going on the circuit in whatever, um, just fast road. Yeah, so it's a bit, everyone's different. That's what we like about it, and they're not all the same. And then as you can think of to me, thought I forgot. Not for a minute, no. No, I think that's all, that's all good, isn't it? Um, no doubt there'll be other little things that he wants to add on along the way. But um, when we get all this side of it done, on the mechanical side of it, and I'll wear it, then we'll shift ramps, and then I'll install the, the MEF kit on it. And then it'll be exciting. We'll see what sort of, you know, uh, enhancements, um, you know, and some sort of figures we get out of it, we'll, we'll have a go and see. I mean, we don't have a road and road here. We don't usually do that, but we can get the car dyno if he wants to. So we'll talk about that with him uh, nearer the time. So enough chit chat, Timmy, from you. Yep. Let's crack on. Yep. Hey. All back on, Timmy, yeah? Yep. Right, viewers, there we are. So we can see. No. Back up, just back up. Oh, like the uh, set sort of halfway really happy medium on the rear is what you can see and then the front's the same which we haven't fitted yet we Timmy no we concentrate on the rear first so all the polyurethane yang polyurethane perfect expressions in all done springs shocks rear roll bar ST170 conversion as you can see here we are the directional all around that way, yeah. So that's actually something like this. We've put Motorcraft OE pads in it, look. We've opted for that, either that or Brembo, but I don't know, sort of mood I was in today. Thought we'd have Motorcraft, yeah? Is that right yep. me? That's it. Calipers. Uh, James's were a bit, um, uh, the boots on the pistons were sort of like perished and non existent, and that side was sticking on it. On the a little side. bit, yeah. A bit sticky, and they were a little bit worse for wear, weren't they? Yeah. So we've got a couple of sets of these on the shelf, so they've scrubbed up quite nice. Obviously, the it's quite not a bad match, is it? No. So we I was painted about to the, say it's a very close match. Yeah, we painted the ST one seventy carriers for him. Um, boots are pretty good. They will win assess to me, they. Yeah. All pretty good. Um, Timmy checked all that. Probably silicone brake slider grease in there, so they're all. Nice and uh, the new rubble, yeah. That's, uh, that's it for this phase, I think. The rest of the exhaust, that bit of the exhaust is going to come off, and then we'll share with you when the other one turns up what we're going to be doing. Um, that'd be quite exciting. Uh, yeah, so we're getting there, that's what I say. Right, the saga continues with James's, as you can see. We've put the wheels on, to me, just to test fit them, because we've put the calipers the big uh, brake kit on the front, which James supplied, AP kit, just to see what it's, uh, what it's like. I mean, these are 8 by 17 so you can see they're quite a bit wider. And that gives us extra clearance on the front calipers, which is really good. But as you can see, so everything's all built up on the rear. They're set about half halfway on the coilovers, same with the fronts. So as you can see, that, that's got the ST170 rear discs, all the brake lines are on. Um, let's move to the front quickly. Have a camera at that, Drew. Yep. So as you can see, wheels are on up. And then you can see, look, the, we've just test fitting it. We've got plenty of clearance, look. So being an 8J, 
really does give us that extra. I think if they were a seven, we'd be in trouble because it's you know, the actual casting uh, and design of the wheel. Maybe, I don't know, but that gives us plenty of clearance, so we're quite happy with that. They've all got to come off again anyway, because we've got to just clean them all up, and then we've got to be a bit of touching up on the caliper. That's what it was. So as you can see, come around the look to me. As you can see, look, obviously, subframes up. That's all in, dry shafts are in. Um, this is all not really secure yet. There's no front braided lines on it yet. The black lines, we'll do that afterwards. The coilovers again, set halfway. Um, we've set some um, some negative camber folly on it. We might have to, we'll have to adjust it because we won't know until we let it down because we, what we don't want, because these are eight J's, all right? It'll bring that sidewall closer to the shock, which just by looking up on there, though, you can see that it's a bit close, let's see. That's because we've tilted in on full negative camera on the camera adjustment box. So we might have to back that off. All right, you probably won't, but you probably won't, because he's got eight J rims, he probably will struggle to run full negative degree camber because it's an inch wider the rim. So we'll, you know, this is why we test fit it all. All right, so that's just a quick adjustment. It's all got to come off anyway. All right, so we'll just back that up a bit. Um, and then when we sort of like find a happy medium, it's got to go around to the four poster anyway to readjust it anyway. So that's that side of it's all done. Just got to put the, the can stiff oil in the box. Uh, none of this has been changed. This is all RT330 anyway. And then the radiator, as you can see, so we've, this is the AirTech radiator. That's all in the cartridge, all there ready to go. Um, we're not going to build the front, we'll leave the front end off. No point in putting that back on because we need to, there's other things we need to do. They say the cooler has got to go back on, but we need to, the reason is to get it on its wheels, we need to push it off. We got, um, you know, other jobs that we need to be getting on with, but it's just getting the fundamentals of this done because it needs, it doesn't need a two poster ramp anymore. The exhaust is be interesting. We'll give you a little peek, uh, preview of that in a minute. If we get it on four poster and then we can finish off what we, we want to do to me. We've got to put the charge yeah. pipe in, but obviously we'll- All well, the water hoses to do first. Yeah, all the water hoses to do. The charge pipe off my car, it's already got the nozzle in the in the boost barb in it on the little beast, because I won't be running that anymore. Um, keep everybody guessing what I'm going to do with uh, that car, but we'll talk about that later. Right, so let's back around to the um, rear of the car. Yeah, he's quite naughty, old James, and he keeps sending me all these different, all these extra messages me and saying, uh, can you do this, can you do that? And uh, I don't mind, mate, but we'll have to find time to do it, won't we? Because we didn't plan for some of this stuff, but of course we will do it. So we've got our Cooler Works um, shifter to fit as well. That's a bit different than ours, so I've not, we've not fitted a Cooler Works one yet, but that's quite straightforward because it's not like the old shifter where you, it's complete cable change and, you know, the, the you know, the extra selector on the turret all changed. This is, the Cooler Works one is far more straightforward plug-in, we'll use plug-in play as an example in it, because it just fits through the existing, you use the existing cables, so you don't be, you're not messing around changing all that in there. As Timmy knows, yeah. Yeah. Good luck if you want to try and fit an ultra shifter yourself. It ain't easy. So, this is the easy version, all right? So, uh, the pads have not been in yet. Let's see all the exhaust, seen all that before. Little sneak preview of the exhaust, there we go to me. So this is what James got, we haven't even talked about it. So this is what James got from America. And he wanted to, he wanted a side exit like, like we were on the little beast. Now, unfortunately, we don't offer that for sale. That was just a, a one-off custom made exhaust. Although there is, a, we've got a jig for it. So if, if, if I wanted to um, offer it for sale, I could, but at this present, this time, moment in time, it was just a custom one for the little beast. Um, which Simpson done for me. Um, you know, the WRC rear exit one, which we, you know, is one of them, three of them we sold now, so that's available, but I don't know, I may do, I, I don't know. Somebody would have to convince me and twist my arm to uh, let, them, let them have it, uh, the side exit, because I wanted to keep that unique to the little beast. And whatever I'm doing with that car, the side exit will always stay. That won't change, all right? There'd be a few fabrication changes to the front, but it won't change. So first impressions on this it looks pretty good actually i'm not sure what the cost of it was a lot less than the simpson one obviously so this runs a center silence so same three inch board it runs a center silencer like we do but ours is like a repackable torpedo one different than that and then it's a bit different again because we've got there's right from the turbo so we've got like four parts to it i think it is maybe four or five parts whereas this is just two look so this is just 
you get rid of the, so it's from the cat, basically. Cat or decat, whatever the car is, whatever somebody's running, but that stops in there. Like I say, we've never at first, didn't even know that this was available. And then you've got this section here, which is effectively like the center, you know, tap all in one side exit, comes out there, comes out, they've done it so it comes out where the, uh, the jack and point trim is, because it has to sit below you can't have it up in iron into the actual sill cover, which James was talking to me about. That ain't possible because you've got the sill there. How are you gonna, it'll have to go like that. You can't do that. So it has to sit at that. This is the only place it can sit. Right, so it'll look pretty cool, a bit different. Don't know what it's gonna sound like, we'll find out when we fire it up. But we'll do that at the same time as that we do the, the meth install on the four poster ramp. So that's it, what's this to me? You've been painting your nose again, have you? That's it, so yeah. Your finger nose or your toe nose are both? A bit both. Okay. Whatever, mate. That's it, it looks like loads more to do on this yet. We've made, made good progress on it and it's very exciting. So although James keeps adding stuff all the time, James, thanks mate, it's gonna be good. And we'll share it with you as we go. But loads to do, so let's crack on to me. Time to, uh, oh, it's time to warm. So see you next time.